Hey what's up guys and welcome in today's video where we're gonna make a percussive takeoff track in one hour. So for this tutorial we are gonna use our new percussive takeoff sample pack which is called Vibrate. It's a collection of one shots, midis and loops and you can find the link to it in the description below. So let's start with the kick, we're gonna use a midi track and just look for some kicks. Yeah, let's go with this one for now. Obviously, let's change the BPM to 128. Also, we're gonna add uh, a Fab Filter Pro L2 on the master with 60B of gain. Then let's build a basic groove. Yeah, maybe we can go down to 126. Then uh, let's go and see some top loops. So what is happening here is that the two claps are going a bit out of phase so we're gonna remove the clap from this loop Let's see some percussions as well. Okay, now we can write a quick baseline. So we're gonna use the raw paper and subboom bass 2 as the synth, and we're gonna see it just in the normal bus presets if we have something that we can use. So let's go with this Desert 13. Let's also add the LFO tool for the sidechain.
So now we want to add a bit more variation on the baseline. So we're gonna change a bit the notes. Let's add some processing to this baseline. So let's start with the equalizer. And with some saturation. Obviously at the end some compression. So from here we are just checking the RMS level of the kick and the bass line to make sure that the kick is a bit louder. So now that we have this part we are gonna look for some vocals. Yeah, maybe we can use this one in the breakdown. So we are also modify the kick and the bass line for this. So just duplicating the track and adding a filter at around 150 Hz. So I think we can do some more work here on the drums, maybe adding some other percussions. So in this case I'd rather use a MIDI track, so we can easily change the sound and keeping the same MIDI. So let's add another one. And one more. So here I think that we can also add some synths, so let's use uh, the ultra analog in this case, let's go into the lead section, yeah let's see the key of the bass line of course.
Let's also see if some kind of chord will work, so we can go for a normal major chord. Yeah, maybe for now we'll keep it like this. And so what we're gonna do now is gonna be creating some kind of arrangement. So what I was thinking was like having the first break around here. So we can do 15 seconds, also 30 seconds break here, like this. And then having a bit of the drop here as well. This one is gonna be one minute and then we're gonna do a one minute breakdown. Once again, one minute drop. Then here, this last 15 seconds, maybe another build up with 30 seconds drop and then we have the outro. Okay, so now let's start working on the track from the beginning. So we are obviously not gonna introduce all the elements from the start. Yeah, maybe also the filtered bass line. Yeah, no, or maybe we can just add some kind of effects here.
here we're gonna delete the last kick and the last note. And here we're gonna filter the last bar for the kick and the bass line. So now as for this first drop we're gonna just add another effects here after 15 seconds. and maybe an uplifter So we can also chop the vocal and add some parts in this drop, so uh, we will kind of get the ear used to this sound. like this so now this first breakdown which is not the main one it's gonna be a little bit less big so just a few effects and uh, a few elements. We're gonna delete the kick drum here, for example. So what we're gonna do is gonna be adding a string, so obviously always the same key as the bass line, and we're gonna use the Korg M1 in this case. So let's see, let's look for the preset. So we're gonna add a bit of EQ here and let's try to lower it by an octave So we're also gonna add a snare roll, but only for these 8 bars, so let's pick the snare as well.
So by creating this automation that I've done here, we are just uh, automating the velocity. So the snare will sound harder at the end, uh, while here at the beginning it will be more soft. So one thing that we're gonna do on the master is gonna be adding this endless smile rack which is basically an emulation of the endless smile plugin by data life and with this knob we can easily control a lot of effects like reverb delay filtering so you can see right here which effects we have Yeah, maybe one thing I forgot was to create a filter automation for the vocal, so more or less like this. And we're gonna do a filter automation also for the string, but it's gonna be a bit less aggressive, uh, like this. And another thing that we can do for the breakdown is creating an automation of the frequency of this other filter. So now let's move on into the main drop. So what we're gonna do is gonna copy the effects that we have on the previous drop, also these parts, and uh, we're gonna basically add some more effects to make it a bit more interesting. So here, for example, we can add something. So let's see, maybe some snares. So usually after 15 seconds we would have to introduce another element and we're gonna introduce these vocal chops that we had from before and here we're gonna filter the old bar and we are also gonna add the full vocal. Mm -hmm. 
and here it's where more or less we're gonna introduce the synth what i want to do as well is adding some rights so yeah i think we're gonna use the audio track instead so let's add these rights So yeah, maybe like this. And for all the 30 seconds. Yeah, I think we're gonna work a bit more on this synth because I don't really like how it sounds at the moment. Or what we can also do is gonna be adding another synth to kind of make it a bit more full. Yeah, let's add some sidechain on this one. And some EQ as well. And another thing that we can do with the synth is gonna be adding another layer. So let's see if we can find some sound that can complement this other one that we have here. So yeah, we're gonna just copy the sidechain also on the other scenes and we're gonna group them all together like this. Adding a bit of EQ on the group. And some filtering of course. So we're gonna create a filter automation like this.
So now we are into the main breakdown. So here we're gonna introduce the vocal a bit later on. We're gonna keep the synths in the, the breakdown of course. So like this, but we're gonna change the automation. So we're gonna close the synth here and then back up in the drop. We're gonna remove the kick drum from the second half and we're gonna copy the same snare roll that we had before, but we're just gonna make, make it longer. So let's draw this automation again. And we're gonna also copy the same effects as before, so like this. And another thing that I would like to do here is an automation of the cutoff of the scenes. So we're just gonna go here in the edit and touch this frequency knob. We're gonna do the same for the other scenes as well. Yeah, this one, the filter is almost fully open, so it won't make any sense. So a couple of more things here, it's gonna be moving this part at the beginning. So the string starts from here and we're gonna copy the automation for the vocals. And what we're also gonna do is a crash buildup. So we're gonna pick a crash from the pack. Like this. So maybe we're gonna do a different kind of build up here. So we're not gonna close the scenes, but we're gonna remove it from the first part of the drop. So let's see which one sounds the better. gonna add the rights from the beginning so we need a better way to get from the build up into a drop because I don't really like how it sounds here so probably we're gonna go for a simple like 
kick and bass and then we're going to introduce the rest of the drums so let's see this one and maybe with a double kick here We are also gonna add the same endless smile automation here. Yeah, probably it's better like this. Uh, not really sure again of the of this breakdown. So we're gonna listen to it once again. So here once again copying the same kick and bass line that we had in the previous drop, so like this and also in this final drop, okay. And uh, here I think what we're gonna do is gonna be adding the rides after 15 seconds and then we did the mistake here when copying the kick and the bass line, so this one has to go yeah let's let's delete this part so this one is like this here is correct and here okay like this okay now we're good and then we're just gonna do once again the double kick here so what we're gonna do here is uh, removing the rides from this part we're gonna reintroduce the scenes here always filtered and then from here they are gone So yeah, this one is not going here, we have to use these other effects. So I was thinking about doing this part fully melodic and then having the vocal only in this last section, so something like this. Copying the endless smile automation as before. So maybe we can also have the vocals here but filtered from the beginning.
Okay, that's good. And then we are gonna just remove the same elements that we removed from the beginning. So like this. Yeah, basically now that's kind of all for the arrangement. We're gonna spend the last few minutes talking about the mixing and the mastering. So let's start with the kick drum. We're gonna group the kick and the bass line in two separate groups like this. And let's start with the kick drum. Yeah, I think there is nothing to do here because the transients are already uh, good. Maybe working a bit more on the baseline. Yeah, maybe on the kick we can reduce a bit of the attack. Yeah, on this second kick we have to reduce the velocity as well. So now we're gonna move into the most important part of this track, which are the drums. So we're gonna do a really quick scroll throughout all the channels and we will do some EQing or compression and then we will work on the main bass. This one maybe is a bit too stereo. Let's double check it with the ozone imager. Yeah, this one is a bit too stereo as well. On this one uh, we have to check the transients a bit because there is too much mass. So we're gonna use the Newton free transient shaper which is a multi-band transient shaper and now we're gonna focus a bit on the top end. And the mid band as well. Yeah, a bit of transient shaver also here. And 
the, the right. Maybe adding a bit of reverb on this right. So we're gonna use the audio effect track. So we have a, a dry signal and a reverb signal. And as a plugin, we will go for the Pro R. Now with the full bass, so what I want to do here is some soft clipping. I'm going to use the standard clip and what we're going to do is just removing some of the peaks. Uh, we're going to turn off the oversampling. So as you can see we are increasing the gain, the input gain and we are decreasing the output gain by the same amount. So in this way we are just cutting as you can see in red some of the transients. Then uh, we are gonna add the Newton free transient shaper once again on the drum bus. So in this way we're gonna operate on the full bus and we're gonna do uh, some softer adjustments. Then the imager to check the stereo image. And at the end we're gonna just add an equalizer to make sure that we don't have low frequencies. Now final things here are gonna be some saturation and a bit of compression as well. So for the saturation we're gonna use the black box from Plugin Alliance. And for the compression we can go for the uh, simple Ableton glue compressor and we are going to use the preset full parallel. So we are doing some parallel compression.
We are gonna do now some quick editing on the scenes and on the vocals and then we are gonna cover the mastering because we are almost running out of time. So for the scenes uh, let's start with the first one. In this one we can reduce a bit the attack. And I think we're gonna work on the bass, adding some saturation with the Saturn 2. Let's also check the stereo image on this scenes. So we're gonna add a bit of limiting here to make it a bit more present. Now we have uh, the vocal, so let's do some adjustments here as well. First thing is gonna be some EQ, so we're gonna use the Pro Q3 because we're gonna do some more surgical adjustments here. Also, another thing that we have to do on the scenes is making space for the vocals. So we're just gonna load up uh, Pro Q3 here and we're gonna just lower the part where the vocals are mainly uh, present, which is around here, I think. Anything from 500 to around 5000. So we're gonna go kind of in the middle. Thank you. 
and uh, obviously we're gonna do an automation of this so it plays when the vocal is on so we're gonna do like this and this other part here so in the rest of the track this equalizer will be off but when we're gonna have the vocal all the frequencies in the range will be reduced now uh, we're gonna do some more processing here We already have some delay on the vocal, which is also combined with the delay of the master channel. So I think we're gonna just add some reverb, but uh, really subtle. So let's go for reverb and we're gonna go for the Valhalla room. So one last thing uh, as for the mixing is gonna be adding a uh, utility on the master and doing a uh, gain automation just before the drop. In this way it will hit a bit harder. So let's do 2dB for now. Yeah, maybe also minus three. So now we're gonna do a really quick and basic mastering because we don't have a lot of time left and uh, we are just gonna see if we have enough headroom for now. So we are around minus three, but we want to have a bit more headroom. So we're just gonna drop another utility and reduce the gain by three dB. In this way, we will have around minus six dB. Okay, perfect. Now the first plugin here, it's gonna be an equalizer. So the Pro 3, we're gonna do some mid side processing. So as for the mid, which means the mono signal, we're gonna cut everything below 25 Hz. While as for the sides, we're gonna cut everything below 200 Hz. and also on the top like around 20k hertz then we are gonna add some compression and we're gonna use the glue compressor once again with the preset mastering add sustain around 3 to 4 db is good And uh, now we're gonna take the Pro L back. And we're gonna now increase the gain to get an appropriate loudness. We're gonna use another plugin in this case. It's gonna be the span where we're gonna check the RMS and in general, the frequency spectrum of the track. And we are also gonna see the loops value here in the Pro L.
So this is more or less what you should aim for. As you can see, we have uh, the low frequencies and the top frequencies that are uh, really balanced. And then there is this kind of gap in the middle, which is normal for this kind of tracks where you don't have uh, too many scenes or vocals and as for the levels the RMS has to be around minus 8 to minus 8.5 and here as for the loops we are also around minus 8 and this is kind of the optimal level for this kind of tracks and uh, yeah basically this is all for this video don't forget to check out our sample pack vibrate that we have used to create this song and let us know in the comments what tutorial would you like to see next and i'll see you in the next video bye